Jesus the Christ we come. Lord, we thank you for another privilege. We thank you, God, for another honor. We thank you, Father, for blessing us one more time to come before you. God, you've been the great God. God, you've kept us not only a whole year, but you've kept us this morning. And for that, we thank you. God, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you. God, we glorify you, for you are good, and you are God. God, you're worthy of all the honor, you're worthy of all the praise, and you're worthy of all the glory. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for keeping us in spite of us, in spite of our meanness, in spite of our cruelty, in spite of our discontent, in spite of our gratefulness. Lord, you blessed us. And you kept us. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us, forgive us, Father God, for, for not doing what you would have us to do. And now, Lord, we bless your name. 
We praise you. We honor you. And we glorify your name. Lord, we thank you for meeting us here. We thank you for being, being here before we got here. We thank you, Lord, for residing in us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we come to hear your word. Bless your word that your word will fall on good soil. Bless your word, Father God, that your word, Father God, will go forward. Bless your word, Father God, that the broadcast will connect. Bless your word, Father God, that people's lives will be changed. Hope will be renewed. Strength will be given in the precious name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we thank you, God, for blessing us. And we thank you for keeping us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us to hear from you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise God. I just want to announce that God is still on the strong. He's still making his round. He's still able. And he keeps on blessing us. And he keeps on keeping us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for who he is and what he has already done. He is the great God. He is the great King. He is the King of kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God for who he is. And what he has done. We call your attention to Second Chronicles chapter 26. In the Old Testament, the book is Second Chronicles. The chapter is 26. The verse is number 5. Second Chronicles chapter 26. Verse number 5. In the Old Testament, the book is Second Chronicles. The chapter is 26. The verse is number 5. 2 right. Chronicles chapter 26, verse number 5. When you found that you discovered these words, he saw God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Amen. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. I want to talk about God makes us prosper. God makes us prosper. As we come today, we recognize those who have moved from one point to the other in their education, in their dedication, in the midst of academia. We come today to support you, to encourage you, to thank you for sticking in and hanging in there. We come this morning to Remind you that we know that it's been a tough school year. It's been a mighty tough school year in the fact that we had to deal with the unseen enemy. Before, before last year, we always referred to the unseen enemy as the devil himself. Before last year, we talked about this unseen enemy as one that would always disrupt service. We talked about the unseen enemy, the devil, as one who would always cause relationships to go awry. But on last year, we were introduced to what is known today as an unseen enemy known as COVID-19. The novel coronavirus that has wiped out somewhere near, if not more than 600,000 people. In the midst of it all, children, parents, teachers, principals, and superintendents 
had to rejuggle things and rearrange things unannounced at the last moment. Parents who knew nothing about computers, who didn't want to know anything about computers. Parents who didn't know anything about social media and didn't care a hell of a bean about social media had to learn on the fly. They actually had to build the airplane while it was flying in the air. But you have endured. You have made a difference. You are the ones that we ought to celebrate in the fact that you didn't give up. Yeah. 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 Always there's something and somebody around us who instructs us to keep moving and keep going forward. You ought to have some examples in your neighborhood like I had in my neighborhood growing up. Today I want to highlight, highlight one man. There are many who impact my life. There are many who, who tweaked my life. There are many who made a difference in my life growing up. And I want to say to you today that there are, there are some people in your lives that are making a difference in your life. His name is Mr. Cassie Pennington. Mr. Cassie Pennington made a difference in my life. Matter of fact, as I moved toward graduation this year, I made a phone call to him and he's still in Indianola, Mississippi. Mr. Cassie Pennington lives one block away from my mama. Mr. Cassie Pennington was one who was destined to fail. He didn't have it all together. He was born with a stutter. Mr. Cassie Pennington, he, he could not get two or three words out, but he was a teacher. But the good thing about Mr. Pendleton, he never gave up. When I met him in the seventh grade, he had moved from being a classroom teacher to being what we call the drug man. Don't get it twisted. He wasn't the drug man that was selling drugs. He was the drug man that came around from one school to the other. And he taught little elementary school children how to make sure they stay away from drugs. He taught them how to make sure that they knew what drugs looked like. Mr. Cassie Pennington was looked upon as just the man that came by and told us to stay away from marijuana. He told us to stay away from cocaine. He, he told us to stay away from crack because these other things weren't out there during that time. He had a bulletin board, and he, he walked from one place, one school, one classroom to another, and he just showed us what drugs looked like. Yeah, yeah. And his educational spiel was, you want to stay away from drugs, young people, because drugs will hurt you. Well, if you're saying, you're saying, well, he's just a man that talks about drugs. He's just the director of, of a drug education program. What's so special about Mr. Pennington is because Mr. Pennington had a major speech problem. He couldn't get words out. And, and that appealed to me because I found myself every now and then stuttering just like he did. But he didn't let his deficiencies, he didn't let his disabilities, he didn't let his shortcomings control his life. Mr. Pennington is a, is a salvation story for me. He is a salvation meaning that, that he delivered me from, from being who I was, not in a spiritual sense, but he motivated me. He motivated me because he didn't just stop with being the director of drug education. Mr. Pennington went on to get his degrees. He, he went on to get his doctorate. He, he went on to get all the degrees that he could find, and he went as himself. Young people, just be yourself. Don't, don't look to be anybody else. Just be yourself. He, he was teaching drug education in my seventh grade class. He had class because he kept his life clean. He, 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 he had class because there was nothing out there on him that you could point at him and say he was wrong. 
Mr. Cassie Pennington went on, not only was he the drug education director, he, he was not only a school teacher, but he went on to get his doctorate degree, and he, was, he became superintendent, he became principal, and then superintendent of two different school districts. And today he has retired right there in Indianola, Mississippi, and Mr. Cassie Pennington is making waves out of no way. It's because he didn't quit. It's because he walked with God. And it's because he's kept his focus. Young people, when we look at the text, we find a young man. We find a young man named Uzzah. Uzzah became the king of Judah at age 16. Right. Let me tell you, you don't have to be old to do great things. Right. Young people ought to be doing great things today. Right. Young people ought to do some things today that will amaze other people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want you, young people, to look at the fashions and the designs that other people have and try to be like other people. God has uniquely made you. He has put you together as you are and you are different from anybody else. It doesn't matter whether you can speak clearly right now, you ought to work on your speaking. It doesn't matter if you can read very well right now, uh, you ought to work on your reading. It doesn't matter if, if you cannot get out sentences, structures, and verb of subject agreement as others cannot, you ought to work on it. Mr. Cassie Pennington is a prime example that if you work on what God has given you, then you can do great things. There are some grown folk in here today that need to hear this message, that you need to keep working on you. You just need to keep moving forward with the Lord on your heart. Somebody has told you that you can't get that job. Keep working on it. Somebody has told you you can't pay those bills. Keep working on it. Somebody told you, you can't live in that neighborhood. Keep working on it. We ought to pray like it's all dependent on God. But we need to work like it's all dependent on us. Yes, we need to pray. We need to pray like it's all dependent on God. And we need to work like it's all dependent on us. Because when you put faith in God and work through your own agility, when you put the two together, you have prosperity and you have success. When we look at the text, we have a 16-year-old little boy named Uzzah. 16. 16. Let me tell you, 16 then is the same as 16 now. You know, people get so holy until they think that 16 during those days was more mature than 16 during those days, these days. Let me just share with you, the same number 16 is the same number 16 today. You don't have to be full grown to lead a group of people. You don't have to be full grown to do the right thing in the midst of a group of people. You can be who you are, do what you do, act the way you act, at 16, at 10, at 2, at 5, you can be different. Uzzah, Uzzah, Uzzah was 15 years old. He reigned, meaning he ruled, for 52 years. A 16-year-old did the same thing for 52 years. I know millennials can't do the same thing for 52 minutes. I'm telling you today that you can do the same thing and you can do it well for 52 years. I know, I know you can't imagine, I know you can't visualize this number, 52, but the fact of the matter is, as I reign, he ruled for 52 years, and look at that, he ruled in the same place. In the same place. He ruled in the same place. I know some people who cannot, some grown folk, who cannot stay anywhere, not any location, for 52 minutes. He stayed in the same place. Look at the text. The text declares that, that he ruled for 52 years. The, the text declares that he did the same thing for 52 years. 
And the text declares that not only did he do the same thing for 52 years, he stayed in the same place for 52 years. He was in Jerusalem. He reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. He was the king of Judah. He, he reigned there. He resided there. He stayed there. Let me just share with you. Sometimes you just got to stay with what you have. It, it wasn't always pretty. It wasn't always decent. It wasn't always a, a, a walk in the park. But he stayed there. Stop giving up so fast. Stop letting people misuse you to the point that you quit. Some people have left their churches. Some people have left their churches because somebody got on their nerves. Some people have left their churches because they couldn't do what they want to do. Some people have left their homes, have left their spouses because they couldn't have their way. The Bible says that the 16-year-old had enough wherewithal to hang in there for 52 years. Verse number four declares, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. As a young man, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He did not allow peer pressure to control him. He did not allow people saying to him, if you really want to be cool, you ought to do this. Don't you know that it is cool to get your grades? <laughs> it is cool to, to have good conduct. It is cool to be obedient to parents. It is cool to walk out with the Lord. The Bible says he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. It is cool. It is cool. It is it's chill. It is cool. It is all right. It is a good thing to do what's right. In the sight of the Lord. So this young man did what was right in the sight of God. Then the next part of that verse says that he did it like his daddy did it. I know Father's Day is upon us. I know that Father's Day is around the corner. I know that we're not going to get treated like they got treated in May 2nd Sunday. I understand that. But the Bible says his daddy was a good example. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter if you have a boy or a girl or, or several of them, men have to be great examples because children are pairing themselves after us. The text declares that he did it according to the way his father did it. Verse number five, the Bible says he sought God in the day of the king's reign. He saw God in the days of the prophets. He saw God during the days that, 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 that there was one person who was speaking God's word. Look at what it says. He, he saw God in the days that the preacher, the man of God, was coming through. He saw God in this ruler. It, it says to us, regardless of how prosperous you become, Regardless of how successful you become, you need to hear the word of the Lord. Some people get to a point where they think they got it. They, they think that they've spent enough time doing what they do. They've spent enough time alone with God. Let me just share with you, the Bible declares that when the preacher, when the prophet spoke the word of God, he sought the Lord. As I sought the Lord, as I sought the Lord, he sought the Lord, he sought the Lord. Zechariah, in the days of Zechariah, who, who had understanding of visions of God, he, he understood the preacher man. <laughs> Can you believe that the preacher understands things of God? Can you really believe that the preacher ought to really understand the visions of God? Can you believe that the wise writer, the prophet, the man of God ought to understand the visions of God in other pericopes and in other versions of the Bible? It says that as I learn how to understand visions from the man of God. 
It says, it says that, that he learned, this, this in the original Hebrew text, the original Hebrew text declares that he understood the visions like the man of God, like the prophet of God understood them. Let me just share with you. First thing, you gotta, you got to understand that you're going to have to learn something from somebody else. And I always tell young people, young people, whatever you do, you look at two people, lives headed in two different directions. And you decide which life you want for yourself. You decide. There's a person going left, there's a person going right. You're standing at the fork of the road, and you're looking at two different people, and you look at their lives. As you look at their lives, and you see how their lives lead them, you decide what direction you need to go in. Because let me tell you, whatever they get is what you're going to get. <laughs> whatever ingredients that's in the cake, it's going to come out the same way every time. Whatever the person who's going to the left does, and whatever the person you're going to the right does, those are the examples you will have. It bothers me to see young men who, who, who decide I'm going to sell drugs. Now, drug dealers get caught every day. But they've come to the conclusion, I'm not going to get caught. They have come to the conclusion, Deacon Affleck, that I'm going to buy my mama a house because I'm selling drugs. They have come to the conclusion that I'm going to buy me a brand new ride, digging the scene with the gangster lean, gangster white wall, TV antenna in the back, and now they have them on the back, back of the seat. Let me just share with you. If you work for a living, you can get something and not have to look behind you. You go to sleep at night. You don't have to look behind you. So many young women have come to the conclusion that they got caught, but I'm not going to get caught. So I'm going to steal, and whatever I steal, I'm going to walk out of here with it. Don't you know they got cameras that can see you from the moon? Don't you know that there's somebody watching you at all times? While you're laying down asleep, there's somebody watching you. You can't go anywhere or do anything without somebody watching you. Let me just say you have to learn wisdom. The text declares that he had understanding. He had wisdom. He, he knew what the visions of God are all about. Let me tell you, God has a vision for you. And if you're going to live out the vision that God has for you, then you're going to have to stay with the Lord. The text declares that he sought the Lord. He sought the Lord. He sought the Lord. During the day that he heard the word from the man of God, he sought the Lord. Let me tell you, you're going to have to seek the Lord. The Bible declares, seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord while he is near. The, 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 the folk back home would say, seek the Lord while blood is yet running warm in your body. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Go after God. Look for God. This word means that, that you ought to have a resort. You ought to be able to steal away. You ought to have a, a quiet place where you seek the Lord. You ought to have a resort just for the Lord. And finally, it says to us, and I'll leave you alone. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. I want to say to you today, as long as you seek the Lord, God will make you prosper. The reverse is as true. Whenever you stop speaking the Lord, God can't, even God can't make you prosper. Uh, and you know, you may have a little fine things here and there. You may have something there and here. You may have something that you get right here. And you may have something that you can brag about. But when you stop seeking the Lord, sooner or later it's going to come crashing down. Some of us old folks have figured that out. And what the reason why we're so tough on you and trying to remind you of what to do and tell you to seek the Lord because we have run into dead end walls. We tried it like Frank, Frank Sinatra and we said, I've done it my way. And if you do it your way and it's not the Lord's way, you're headed to a brick wall. You're headed down a one way street the wrong way. If you don't go do it God's way, you're going to crash at 100 miles an hour. Yes, yes. 
I, I never understood. I, I never understood how when a police officer pulled the car over, a guy takes off. <laughs> Brother Miles, this guy just takes off. Man. Now, the guy last week took off. The guy a week from that week took off. A guy a week from that week took off. A guy last year took off. Every last one of them took off and got caught. And then they want to say the police misused me. Oh, you done got his dander in the air now. You, you have gotten his adrenaline going now. I never understood how you're going to take a car that may run 140 miles an hour and I run a helicopter. So it's brown, they try to outrun the helicopter. And not only that, not only does the police officer have a helicopter, every news crew in town about to run over each other in the air with a helicopter. And everybody, everybody at home see you. What makes you think the police is not going to see you? I mean, they get in the car, they, they pull over, and they've decided that they don't want to stop. They've decided that they don't want to go to jail. Now, not only are they going to go to jail, but they're risking going to hell. Because many times, if they don't get caught, a tree stops them. If a tree doesn't stop them, a wall stops them. Young people, do it God's way and watch God bless you. Stay with the Lord. Stay with the Lord. The Bible says that Uzzah prayed, he sought the Lord. The Bible says that Uzzah stayed around the word of God. You got to stay around the word of God. Keep the word of God flowing through your heart, flowing through your mind, and flowing through your temperament. And finally, he says to us, if you do this, you will prosper. The word prosper means that, that you will have good success. The word prosper means that that you will you will have a prosperous a profitable life. The word prosper means that that God will be with you even when everybody else is going through. When everybody else is going through, when everybody else don't know which way to turn, you turn to God. And as you turn to God, God can bless you to prosper. Paul sets the example. He sets the example while he was being persecuted, while he was being prosecuted, while he was being beaten, while he was being torn apart. He turned to God. Let me tell you, the only way I'm standing here today is because I turned to God. My life was messed up. The reason why Mr. Cassie Pennington means so much to me because my reading was terrible. My vision was terrible. My speaking was horrible, but I stayed with it. I stuck with it. And Mr. Pennington showed me, not only can you just do what you want to do now, you can have a lifetime of prosperity if you stay and stick with the Lord. To this day, he's, he's honored in the neighborhood. To this day, he's respected in the neighborhood. To this day, men, women, boys, and girls call Dr. Pennington and because they respect him. I want to say to you today, you can set a standard today. You can set a standard today and you can have a standard that will live with you from now on. Set the standard today. Number one, pray to God. Number two, stay with the word of God. Number three, obey the word of God and watch how God carries you through. Jesus sets the example, the ultimate example of doing it God's way. When you do it God's way, you will prosper. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Christ, God's only son, he died on a skull hill called Calvary. He voluntarily gave up his life for you and me. He died, I tell you. Men thought he was not going to be prosperous. The devil thought they had him. The devil declared victory. But Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. They laid him in a barber tomb. Out of that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He's the ultimate example of victory, of prosperity, of success, and of profit. When you walk with the Lord. Amen. The door of the church is open. Amen. The invitation is extended. You may be here today. 
and you never trust Jesus as your personal Savior. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to try him. I had to try him. And I have not regretted it ever. You ought to try Jesus. Try allowing him to be your Savior. Allow him to be your Lord. Allow him to be your guide. He will rescue you. He will make you anew. The door is open. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my sister. Yes, yes, Lord. He will give you brand new life. Come on, come on. Come on. If you've never received Jesus Christ, this is your moment. The Bible says, if you believe the story, that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the skull hill called Calvary. If you believe that they buried him in a barber tomb, you believe that he rose from the dead, you can go to heaven when you die. The door is open. You see, because the good works you do can't get you to heaven. It doesn't matter how much you raise your hand, how much you feed the hungry, how much you clothe the naked. It can't keep you. And you will not go to heaven because of it. It's nothing that we can do to get to heaven except, except Jesus. We must accept the story that an innocent man, Jesus the Christ, died. An innocent man died for guilty men and women, boys and girls. An innocent man voluntarily died for you. Mean men killed him. Mean men falsely accused him. Mean men hung him on a cross. And he died for your sins and he died for mine. Mean men laid him in a bar or two. It was borrowed because you didn't need it too long. Early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. You can be saved on this story. Not because of what you do. Not because of how good you are. Not because you live a good and pretty life. You're only saved by the, the birth of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You can only be born through Jesus Christ and Christ alone. If you're here and you want to join me in prayer, invite Christ into your life. Will you join me and just invite him in right now? Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe you were buried in a barber tomb. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you. Amen. That's a good place to clap right there. There may be others of you who, who are saved and know that you are, but for some reason or the other you struggle with sin 
like I do. You may have the same testimony I have that every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. I want to pray for us, pray for you. In the name of Jesus, we come, Lord. We thank you for this privilege. This privilege of repenting. This privilege of coming back to you. This privilege of rededicating. This privilege of recommitting. We come now, Lord, asking you to forgive us. Bless us, Father God, to follow you. Bless us to stay with you, to honor you. We ask you to forgive us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who are in between church homes or don't have a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the captain, where Jesus is the main attraction, where Jesus is the center of attention. You can join the New Beginning Church by inboxing me and letting me know, or you can walk down the aisles right now and be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston. And if you have it in the Houston area, please join us at 4251 Shiremai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. That's 4251 Shiremai Road, Houston, Texas, 77. 048 USA. Thank you so much. Thanks for being a part of our service. Thank God for who he is and we praise him for what he has already done. We praise God for he is the one who makes us prosperous. If we're going to have prosperity, it's going to be through Jesus and Jesus alone. It is now time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts. Hallelujah. It's time to give. It's time to give to the Lord. It's time to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, uh, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. For those who are listening to our broadcast, you can contribute by our Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com lifting dot Jesus at yahoo.com that is our Zelle account or if you want to mail in your offering, your tithe, your sacrificial giving, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459 P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77 Four, five, nine. You can mail it to the New Beginning Church. Amen. God bless you. Uh, I want to ask this side to stand. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We thank you for money. We thank you for income. We thank you for increase. We ask you to bless us as we come to give. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. We you follow young ladies from the rear to the front? Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts.
we thank you for every gift. We thank you for every income. We thank you for every increase. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us now and bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. We'll be praying for uh, Walter and Luke Eloise Johnson. We'll be praying for uh, Miss Kincaid, 23-year-old. We'll be praying for Katie Smith. And we'll be praying for Diane Turner, Glenn Turner, and their family. We want to lift them before the Lord. And anyone else that name we have not called, we want to take you before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for the increase. We thank you for the money. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless the Johnson family, Walter and Eloise. We pray for them, health and their strength. We pray for Miss Kincaid. We pray that you bless her, heal her body, give her great support. We pray for Katie Smith. We pray, Lord, that you continue to walk with her and be her doctor. We pray for Diane Turner, Glenn Turner. We pray for them in this moment of bereavement. And we pray for them during these moments of sickness. Lord, we trust you as the almighty God. We know you can do anything with anybody. We bless your name and we thank you now. And we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. Today we celebrate the ending of school. Are there any young people celebrating the ending of school? Let me hear you if you celebrate the ending of school. Anybody? Okay, they want to go back to school tomorrow. Let me call the superintendent and tell them they want to be back in school tomorrow. They're not celebrating the ending. I, when I, my last day of school, I was celebrating. I was celebrating. I was celebrating. I was rejoicing. And so we want to celebrate, celebrate the ending of school and I've asked for you to send in uh, your report cards. Some of you did and some of you didn't. So those who did will get some for did it. And so some of who did not won't get anything for did it. Amen. So we want to thank, thank you for, for turning in your report cards. And I think we have at least one. Who, who's graduating from anything? Graduating from, from Head Start to Kindergarten, from Kindergarten to to elementary, from elementary to to what's come next? Middle school, from middle school to junior high, from 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 junior high to high school, from high school to college, from college to undergrad, from undergrad to grad, from grad to postgrad. Anybody graduating, please stand. Please stand if you're graduating from one level to the other. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate this man graduating. Okay, this young man right here, where, where are you graduating? What, 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 what level are you graduating? Where you, what, you going from what to what? I can't hear you. From where? From, from elementary to middle school? Amen. Elementary to middle school. Amen. Amen. Elementary to middle school. I, I remember when I did that. That was back in 1977 when I did that. You remember when 1977 was? Oh, okay. You don't. All right. Sister here, where are you graduating? I can't hear you. Middle school. Middle school to high school. What? Oh, I remember that like it was yesterday. I remember that. Middle school to high school. So we got a middle schooler and a high schooler. I'm going to ask those two to come on up. These are our graduates for, for this year. Come on up if you are graduating this year. You have to stand way back here. Amen. Come over here again. 
Okay, it says Certificate of Achievement. <clears throat> this award is presented to Daniel Malo and also Danielle Tonga for your achievements in the 2021 school year. Your New Beginning Church family is very proud of you. Continue to put God first in all your endeavors and watch God bless you to reach your highest goals. That's what Pastor Davis talked about on today. New Beginning Church, Houston, Texas, June 13th, and it is signed by your pastor. Amen. Amen. Then you get a gift call. And then you'll get a gift call. We're going to take pictures afterwards, okay? I also would like to recognize Sophia Galvan. Would you please come up? Because she followed directions. She sent in her grade. And Sophia, I believe, is going from the seventh grade to the eighth grade. And if I tell you, if you look at Sophia's transcript, I mean, it's just close to 100. Congratulations, Sophia, for all of your endeavors. Caitlin Carter, she's not here, but she was named to receive the Merit Award for ninth grade, so we are so proud of Caitlin um, Carter. And also, another person that sent in their grade, Chrisette Wickfall, who's a part of our youth uh, Sunday school class, she received just honors all over the place. I think her lowest grade for the year was like 94. Like Sophia's lowest grade for the year was about 96. I tell you, we're just so excited. We have all these smart girls. Also, Braylon Bird, he turned in his grades and he, he is an AB honor roll student and he received a certificate from his school for most improved in band and musicianship. So we know that Brayden has an instrument that he knows how to play, and I'm sure he's going to be introducing us to that uh, that instrument. We also have uh, Gilbert Garza, who uh, turned in his grades, and he is going to the next grade, so we want to say congratulations to Gilbert Garza. And last but not least, we have our very own pastor, who he went from what? Your master's to your doctorate. I don't know what he went from. He just been in school. That's all I know. So anyway, so Pastor Davis has received his doctorate uh, degree, and we celebrated him on last week. But I decided he should have a certificate too. All right. So th thank you, Pastor Davis. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want to ask Sister Woods to come. You coming with her? Who's coming with you? If you did not turn anything in to me, would you please see me after church? I'm going to be nice today. Okay. Thank you. Amen. We're waiting on Sister Woods to come. She's walking like a young lady, but she's coming. She's coming. She's coming. Sister Woods is coming. Sister Woods is coming. Yes, she's walking like a young lady today. Amen. Uh, good morning. Uh, I know just talked about it, that she's getting older. So on behalf of the ladies of New, New, New Beginning, Sister Davis, we would like to present you with this little token of fruit. I know. Happy birthday to you. We know you say you're going to be 61, but don't tell nobody. I know, I don't care. But happy birthday from the ladies of New Beginning. Thank you so much. Is that it? Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being in church today. Thank our audience for, for being a part of our service. Thank you for, for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. Thank you for, for being a part. Why don't we stand to our feet and so we can be dismissed. Let the church say amen. Let the church, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, that you're the one who makes us to prosper. We thank you for blessing our lives and, and blessing us, Father God, that we have come this far. We thank you for our young people. We thank you for our graduates. We thank you, Father God, for keeping them doing this year. God, you've been faithful to us. We ask you to bless us to be faithful to you. Lord, we praise you now. We thank you for the New Beginning Church, for all our members. We thank you for all our attendees, whether near or far. We thank you for all our visitors. God, we praise you, Father God, for you have blessed us. And there is none like you. Lord, we ask you to continue to walk with us, continue to stand by us, continue to bless us to grow according to your will. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise God, Unto him, the only powerful God. Unto him be glory, be honor, be majesty. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah to the Lord. God bless you and keep you.